Hi, my name is Jenny, and I'm a graduate of Dev Code Camp, and this was my capstone project. For my capstone project, I've created a web application called Sewing by Susie. The inspiration for this um, project came from being able to watch my mom's small sewing business grow from just her to adding two additional employees and being able to work alongside her once in a while, I was able to see on a personal level some of their business struggles due to the increasing orders that they were getting. We recognize some of these business needs and hopefully this web application is able to help them improve communication between the business and their customers, their orders tracking and order status tracking for their customers. And it's also digital branding for their shop where they can showcase some of their work um, and list some general store information. Some technologies I used um, are Django Python for the back end, React for the front end, Bootstrap and some CSS for styling. And I also use Twilio, which is a cloud-based communication platform where it allows the business to send the customer a text notification telling them that the, their status for the order has changed. And I can show that how this is being used later on in the application. So let's go take a look. So this is Sewing by Suzy. Every user um, will land on this homepage. On the homepage, they are able to see pictures of the shop. Um, and this is pictures of the shop here. And then this is the employees and some of their work. And below that is a list of reviews by date. Um, it is set as an anonymous user because um, every user that wants to leave a review will immediately be set as an anonymous user so that their information is not provided. Um, but it will show their star rating that they gave for the shop and then a little note that they left for the shop. Um, underneath that is um, store hours and then the location of the shop. There are four different types of user that can come on this um, Sewing by Suzy website. Um, again, they will start out uh, on this homepage and as an anonymous user. So that's the first type of user that we'll go over. As an anonymous user, they will have access to the pricing and rate sheet. This is where um, a, a, a the shop lists their general pricing information. Let's say a customer wants to check how much it is um, to shorten a skirt, they can see it here. Uh, they can click login if they wanted to log in and into their account, they can, um, but if they do not have an account to start with, they can click here to create an account. So it will bring them to the register page. If they click on register page, they'll land on the same page as well, where they can create a username and a password, and they can put in their email address um, and first name and last name and click register and it'll bring them to the login page. But let's say um, as an anonymous user, you do not have an account and you do not want to create one or log into one, but you want to check on your, the status of your order, they can click on order status here. And I know that I have an order of number five, so let's just type in um, order number five, click get status, and we'll see the status here, um, which has been picked up by customer. So now let's uh, check out uh, customer user and what their view is like. So let's log in as a customer. Okay, so as a customer, I'll still have access to this homepage and the pricing and rate sheet, um, but they can click on new orders and this is where they'll be able to see all of their personal orders that they've previously put in or that they currently have active. Um, it has their order number here, um, and we just checked order number five, and the status was picked up by customer. Um, but it also has the date of um, when the order was put in, the notes for that order, and the current status for that order. Um, and then they can click on review if they wanted to leave a review. So again, it's set for an, as anonymous for them. So let's say they wanted to leave a review, a star rating of four. And then uh, let's say we wanted to um, leave a test review here. So we'll just type in test and click add review. And we'll see that their review has been added to the, the list of reviews here. Um, so right here, the date of October 24th, um, the star rating of four and the test message or the review, the mes message that was left is added to this model. 
So now let's log out and see what the functionality of a employee is like. So let's log in as an employee. So as an employee, um, they have access to a list of customers here by clicking customers. They can see the customer name, the phone number, the email address of that customer. And if they click on additional information, they click view here, they can see the contact information again, but they can also see a list of orders for that customer with the order number listed along with a date, note, and the current status that that order is in. So the order status for an employee, um, the view is a little different. They know um, that one, it's set as one, two, three, and four, um, and it tells them you know, what, what, um, what that current status is for that uh, order. So let's close that. Um, and then if they wanted to create a new customer, they can. They just cl click create new customer here. They can type in a first name, last name, um, and then a phone number here. Let's change that up. And then um, they can create, uh, they can type in the email address here, click create, and that new customer is added to the customer list as you can see here. They can also search customers as well. Um, let's say um, as an employee, I know that there's a customer with a, a name starting with a J. They can just type in J, click search by here and select name. And it'll pull up all the accounts with the, um, the, the customer name containing the letter J. Um, let's say they wanna search by email instead and they know that the email address contains a letter E. They can type in E instead of searching name, they can select a search by email and it'll pull up all the accounts with the email address containing the letter E. They can also search by uh, phone number. Um, same thing, type in the, the numbers 111 um, and instead search search by uh, search by phone number and it'll pull up all the accounts with the phone number containing uh, numbers 111. They can also view a list of orders as well by clicking orders. Um, it'll show the order ID, the customer name, um, information, uh, phone number, the date the order was put in and notes and again status here. Um, if they click on view additional information, this is where they can um, change the status of this order. Um, and this is where Twilio is used. So let's say I wanna change this to a status of three. Um, they will type in status number three, click update status. And I should be, um, and I just received a text message from Twilio saying that um, your new order status has been changed from sewing by Susie. Okay, um, so then that is how Twilio is used. But let's say we want to create a new order. We can click create new order. Um, they will put in the phone number. Um, so we just created the co test customer here with the phone number of 234111, 1112. Um, we'll select that phone number for that customer. And then the date is automatically set on today's date. We'll put in the test message for, um, as, as a note and we'll click add garment here. This is where we'll be able to add in the type of garment and the quantity of the, uh, of the amount of, uh, of the amount of that garment in. So let's say pants and there's one. We'll click add and we see that that uh, garment has been added to the garment list here. If um, sometimes customers will, will have multiple types, multiple garments to alter at once and they can continue um, to add in the type of garments here. But let's say there isn't any more, then we'll just close it. Um, then from there, we'll click create order. And we can see that that new order has been created with the order ID here, um, the customer name, phone number, the date, um, the test note, the note, and the current status, which will always start out as one. Um, and lastly, uh, as an employee, you are able to view a list of inventory here by clicking inventory. Here's a list of inventory. They can create uh, a new inventory. So let's say we'll create red thread, description thread that is red to sew, quantity 50, category thread. 
Once all the information has been added, we can just click add and that new inventory is added to the inventory list, as you can see here. Um, we can also delete that inventory as an employee as well. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now that um, inventory has been deleted from the inventory list. Um, so let's log out. And lastly, let's take a look at the view of a business owner. The only difference that a business owner has um, th that is different from an employee is that they are able to view a list of employees. Okay, um, so that is my um, that is my capstone project. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me e either um, by text or uh, via LinkedIn. Or you can also email me as as well. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Have a good day.